We are going to see a fresh topic, monopolistic competition. Before going to introduce this topic, I would like you to recall the meaning of market and the essentials of market. We know that for an ordinary person, the term market refers a place, but in economics, the term market will not refer any place or shop or establishment. Instead, it refers the buying and selling activity. The essentials of market are, number one, there should be buyers or sellers for the commodity or service. Second one is, there should be a contact between buyers and sellers. The contact may be in a direct manner or in an indirect manner. The third one is, both the buyers and sellers should deal with the same commodity or service. And the last essential is, there should be a price or there should be a place for the commodity or service. The market on the basis of nature of competition is classified into two, namely perfect competition and imperfect competition. In imperfect competition, there are various forms, namely monopoly, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, duopoly, etc. Of these various forms, now we are going to see in detail monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition, which was popularized by E. Chamberlain, is one type of imperfect competition. This type of market has the element of monopoly and competition, of which the competition predominates. The various features of monopolistic competition are, number one, large number of buyers and sellers, number two, product differentiation, number three, selling cost, Number four, free entry and exit of firms. And number five, two dimensional competition. Now we are going to see in detail about these characteristics. The first character of monopolistic competition is the presence of large number of buyers and sellers. Here, large number of sellers denote that each seller has to contribute very minimum in his total supply. That is, in other words, you can say, in the total supply, the contribution of each seller is very negligent. It is very minimum. That means, each seller has a minimum market share in the total industry. In addition to that, the seller has an independent price and output policy. The second feature of monopolistic competition is product differentiation. It is a typical and unique feature for monopolistic competition. Each firm tries to maximize its market share in the industry. In order to capture large market share, it wishes to differentiate the products either in physical forms or in quality or it may be an imaginary product differentiation or making some differences in the customer benefit, the product differentiation may happen. Suppose in an industry, if there are large firms, one firm by making differences in the shape or color or weight may differentiate it from other products. That is called physical differences. Or by making changes in the quality of the products, a firm may compete with other firm. Sometimes without making any real difference, a firm by artificially creating a difference may compete with other firm and in the provision of customer benefits like guarantee, free door delivery services, etc., a firm may compete with other firm. Anyhow, the main aim of product differentiation is to capture large part of market share in the industry. In simple, we can say, higher the product differentiation, higher will be the market share of the firm. The third feature of monopolistic competition is selling cost. We know the meaning of selling cost. What is selling cost? The cost incurred for sales promotion is called selling cost. For example, advertisement expenditure is a selling cost. The selling cost is the life and death matter 
for a firm under monopolistic competition because each and every firm made to realize a customer that there are some differences in the products. So, selling cost is very important and it is also a unique feature for monopolistic competition. For example, with regard to beverages, Harlix incur huge expenditure for sales promotion that is maximum expenditure is incurred by Harlix for advertisement. What is the purpose? The purpose of incurring selling cost is to capture large part of the market share. It should attract the customers by expliciting the differences in the quality or the products. So, selling cost is very important for a firm under monopolistic competition. Now, the next feature of monopolistic competition is freedom of entry and exit of firms. Here, any firm can enter into the industry or any firm which is now surviving can exit the industry. There is no restriction for entry of new firms or exit of existing firms. This feature makes the competition stiff in monopolistic competition. The last feature of monopolistic competition is two dimensional competition. That is a firm under monopolistic competition may compete with other firms in two aspects. First one is price competition and the second one is non price competition. What is price competition? A firm by reducing its price of the uh, products may compete with other firms that is called price competition. In this way a firm may compete with other firms. In other aspects also a firm may compete with other firm that is without making any change in its price by improving the quality or by differentiating the products a firm may compete with other firms that is called non price competition. So, these are all the five features for monopolistic competition. Now, I wish to summarize the characteristics of monopolistic competition. The characters of monopolistic competitions are the first one is large number of buyers and sellers, second one is product differentiation, third important character is importance of selling cost, the fourth feature is freedom of entry and exit of firms and the last character of monopolistic competition is two dimensional competition in which we have to recall price competition and non price competition. Now, we are going to see the price and output determination under monopolistic competition. We know that a producer under monopolistic competition has independent price output policy. The price and output determination can be studied under two heads. The first one is price and output determination in the short run and the second one is price and output determination in the long run. First, we are going to see the price and output determination in the short run. Before that, we have to recall what is short run. We know that short run is a period where production capacity of the firm is more or less idle. The second character for short run is in the short run, there are some fixed factors and variable factors. Normally, less than one year is called short run. In the short run, a firm under monopolistic competition can earn either supernormal profits or normal profits or a firm may incur loss also. Normally, efficient firms will earn supernormal profits, average firms will earn normal profits and inefficient firms will incur loss also. These three chances can be explained by three different diagrams. With regard to these diagrams, firm A is incurring super normal profits. Here in the O x axis we are referring the output and O y axis indicates price, revenue and cost incurred by the firm. Here A R line indicates the average revenue or the demand curve of the firm. M R indicates the marginal revenue of the firm which normally lies below the average revenue line. S A C means short run average cost curve. SMC means short run marginal cost curve. Before going to fix the price and output of the firm, we have to find out the equilibrium points. We know that there are two conditions to find the equilibrium point. The first one is marginal cost should be equal to marginal revenue. The second condition is the marginal cost curve should cut the marginal revenue curve from below. 
when you apply these two points to find out the equilibrium point, we say that at point E the firm is in equilibrium point. So, point E is the equilibrium point. This equilibrium point should be extended towards O x axis. Then we can find the equilibrium output. So, when the point e, equilibrium point E is extended towards O x axis, we get O m as the equilibrium output. This equilibrium point when it is extended towards average cost curve, it touches at point Q. So, Q m or O p is the average cost for one unit that is per unit cost is O p. This equilibrium point when it is extended towards AR curve touches at point S. So, S m or O r is the per unit revenue that is by selling one unit the firm earns O r amount of revenue. So, the total revenue is O r into O m that is the per unit revenue is O r the firm produces O m units. So, total revenue is O r into O m that is equal to O r S m. For producing such amount of the commodity, we have to incur cost. So, the total cost is O p into O m that is O p is per unit cost, O m units are produced. So, O p into O m that is equal to O p q m. Here, total revenue is greater than total cost that is O r s m is greater than O p q m. So, the firm earns super normal profit this super normal profit is equal to P R S Q. So, such amount of super normal profit is earned by an efficient firm. So, a firm under monopolistic competition may earn super normal profit also. In the short run, a firm under monopolistic competition may earn normal profit also. Normally, average firms will earn normal profit only in the short run. This is explained in this diagram. Here, AR represents the average revenue curve of the firm. MR, which lies below the AR, indicates the marginal revenue, and SAC refers the short run average cost curve, and SMC indicates the short run marginal cost of the firm. As usual, in the OX axis, we are referring the output, and in the OY axis, we are indicating the price, revenue, and the cost incurred by the firm. In this diagram, the SAC curve touches the AR curve in a particular point alone. And to find the equilibrium output, we have to find out the equilibrium points. The above said two conditions apply here also. So, when the equilibrium conditions are applied, we say that at point E, the producer can be at the equilibrium point. When the point, when it is extended towards OX axis gives the equilibrium output. So, here O m is the equilibrium output and when the equilibrium point is extended towards AR curve or AC curve at point T it touches the axis. So, here the average revenue curve as well as the average cost curve intersect at the point T. So, in this case the total revenue is equal to total cost. Here total revenue as well as total cost is O p into O m that is equal to O p t m. Since total revenue is equal to total cost, the firm earns only normal profit. In the short run, an inefficient firm under monopolistic competition may incur loss also. This is explained by the third diagram. Here, firm C incur loss. In this diagram, AR curve represents the average revenue, MR indicates the marginal revenue curve of the firm, SAC refers short run average cost curve of the firm and SMC implies short run marginal cost. As usual, we have to find out the equilibrium points. The two rules have to be applied to find the equilibrium points. In this diagram, E is the equilibrium point. So, O m is the equilibrium output. Here, 
total cost is greater than total revenue because the per unit cost is OR. The firm produces OM amount of commodity. So, total cost is OR into OM that is ORSM. But by selling OM amount of the commodity, the total revenue of the firm is only OPQM because the per unit revenue is OP, the firm produces OM commodity. So, total revenue is OPQM. So, total cost is greater than total revenue. Hence, in the short run, this firm incur loss that is equal to PRSQ. So, the loss for the firm is PRSQ in the short run. Now, we are going to see the price and output determination in the long run. First of all, we should know what is long run. There are three features for long run. The first one is, in the long run, the production capacity of the firm can be altered according to demand condition. The second one is, in the long run, all factors are variable factors. Normally, more than one year is called long run. In the long run, all firms under monopolistic competition will earn normal profit only because when a firm earns super normal profit in the long run, it will attract other firms in other industry. Since there are no restrictions for entry of new firms, the competition may increase so that the supply of the commodity will increase. Hence, a firm which earns super normal profit in the short run may earn only normal profit in the long run. Similarly, a firm which incur loss in the short run may exit the industry. So, the only possibility is in the long run, a firm under monopolistic competition will earn normal profit only. This is explained by a diagram. Here, in the OX axis, we are measuring the output and OY axis indicates the price, revenue and cost incurred by the firm. In this diagram, LAR represents long run average revenue. LMR represents long run marginal revenue of the firm which lies below the LAR curve. LAC which is a boat shaped curve means long run average cost curve because SAC is a U shaped curve whereas LAC is an boat shaped curve. LMC represent long run marginal cost. We have to find out the equilibrium point. When the same conditions that is when the two conditions for equilibrium are applied at point E the firm is in equilibrium. So, from this we can say that OM is the equilibrium output. Here LAR curve and LMC curve are tangent at point T. So, the total revenue will be equal to the total cost. In this diagram, the per unit cost or the per unit revenue of the firm is OP. At OP price, the firm sells OM commodity. So, the total revenue is OP into OM that is equal to OPTM. To produce OM commodity, the firm has to incur expenditure. So, the total cost is also OP into OM that is equal to OPTM. Since total revenue is equal to total cost, the firm in the long run earns only normal profit. Now, I wish to summarize the things that I have told to you. First, we have seen the meaning of market. Then, we have outlined the meaning of market structure and we have also seen the essentials of market. With regard to monopolistic competition, we have seen the various characteristics of monopolistic competition and the price and output determination in the short run as well as in the long run. In the short run, a firm under monopolistic competition may earn super normal profits, normal profits or an inefficient firm may incur loss also. But in the long run, all firms under monopolistic competition will earn only normal profits.